Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to the next lesson in our Africa Team Geeks series of lessons. Um, my name is Karen Anderson and this is once again Grade 10 Information Technology. So let's get started with today's lesson. So today what I'm going to be covering is constants. So remember yesterday I gave you some homework to do and I told you that you needed to do the constants activity and the online gaming activity. So now we're going to go through the solution to that. We're also going to have a, a look at more of the rules regarding if statements and make sure that you completely understand what's expected of you in that sense. We're going to look at ink and deck, which I've referred to in previous lessons, but I want to make sure that you understand how it works. And then I'm going to give you the take a lot activity for homework for tomorrow's lesson. Um, please, I am trying a new system today. So um, I just want to make sure that it's going to work. So I can actually for today, because I've been using two screens, I can see your Q&A. I haven't got any questions for you in today's activity, but I can actually see if you guys post a question and I can then hopefully answer it. OK, so let's move on. So. Now what you need to do is you need to compare your answer to the solution for the particular activity. OK, so here is a screenshot of the constants activity with possible solutions. OK, and this is then the code. So you were given this constant declaration. You didn't have to do anything with it except use the constants in your actual calculation. So if you used 96 instead of AVNUM tissues, then you would have lost marks in a test or an exam for this. OK, so learners getting in from the input box that you should be quite all right with by now. Don't forget all the brackets and also don't forget about the conversion from string to int. OK, then the number of boxes of tissues, I hope you realise, and that's why I've highlighted it here, needed to have the seal function because you can't buy half a box of tissues. And in order to have enough for everybody, you have to buy more. So if you didn't use the seal function, again, in a test or an exam, you would have lost a mark. And then it's the number of learners times the average number of tissues divided by how many tissues there are in a box. And then your cost is going to be number of boxes times box cost. And then your output was pretty straightforward, just outputting everything. And don't forget about float to string F using FF currency. Then the next part was the school button or the school click button. And here again, you needed to read carefully. So you were given the size of a netball court, the size of a rugby field, the class size and the offices and the school's name all is constants, OK? And the question said, and I've put it here to draw your attention to it. The school also needs space for offices, rugby fields and three netball fields. So it was important that you made sure that you took that into account in your calculation. So you asked the user for length and width. You then multiplied it to get the area. Then the actual area, and you'll see here, now it has to be a real, okay, because of the rugby field, or more importantly, the netball court that is a real value. So therefore, our area, the result of your calculation, has to be real. Okay. Um, all right. So somebody's asked me, how did you work out the constants? They were there already. So you didn't have to do anything. You were told that the constants were declared. So if you went up to the top of the unit under the forms var, you would have seen that they were there. And all you had to do is use them in your calculation. OK, so then you had to work out. So the area, the total area had to be minus or had to minus two times the rugby field size minus the office's size minus three times netball one court. So you had to subtract all of that 
from the area that you calculated to work out how many classes you could have. And here you needed to use the floor function because again, if you've got a space or an area and then you um, you want to build classrooms in it, if you've only got half the space left for a classroom, you can't build a classroom then. So therefore you had to floor or round it down or round it in order to be sure, no, floor it, in order to be sure that it would um, it would actually accommodate all the classrooms. Okay, so then your output again, pretty clear, put it in the caption, clear the rich edit, that kind of thing. Sorry if you don't see my mouse, I just want to make sure that I'm on the right place somewhere else. Right, so this was now the solution to that. The next one was you had to do the online gaming activity and here you had to put people's names in and the number of minutes they spent gaming. Okay. Oh, you recreated the forms. Oh dear, I'm sorry about that. Um, so hopefully now you can go back and see exactly what you needed and I'll show you again at the end of the lesson where to get the files so you don't have to recreate them. Okay, right, so this one, this was your add button. Pretty straightforward as far as the input was concerned. You had to generate a random grade. Okay, and then you had to work out the hours and minutes, which was using modern div. So hours is going to be minutes div 60, minutes is going to be minutes mod 60, and then you only add the hours to the total, add one to the count because you've added another person, and then you work out their percentage of how much they were working. Okay, which number, sorry, Callum, is it? <laughs> 119% of your time, hey? Eh? Okay, and then again, you had to output, and here I pointed out when I gave you the activity that the output was in columns, okay? If we go back, there are one, two, three, four, five columns of data. Nowhere in the question did it tell you to set up the columns. So therefore, you needed to know that you had to put hash nine between each one of the output, and then we'll get to the next slide now. Don't forget that you were also told to enable BTN summary. <clears throat> so now there's the summary button where you had to calculate the, the average and output everything to the rich edit as a summary underneath your columns. Okay. And then here is where I pointed out the fact that you had to set your own tab stops. Okay, so that meant, and this is the important thing that I want to draw your attention to, five columns means four tabs. Okay, another way to use to determine how many tabs to set is to look at how many times you type hash nine. So the number of times you type hash nine is going to determine how many columns. Okay, all right, Honey's asked, where do you get the activities? You need to, for you can either purchase the book off the IT Schools Internet website as an ebook, or else in the lessons, I will show you what activities you need to do and when the video is uploaded to YouTube you can then go back. Um, just while I'm talking to you guys now you'll have to test this because I'm not sure if it works but now that this meeting is scheduled you can actually come back to this link anytime today and watch this lesson as a recording. Okay, so you can test it later. It means you can just come in once the lesson is over. This meeting is set up so that you can come back anytime and watch the recording. So then you can have a look more carefully at where to download the files and what the questions are and that kind of thing. Okay, right. So remember, please, back to this. If we have five columns, we have to set four tabs and then we number each tab from zero and we give it a value to say how far each of those tabs is and then we put our heading in. And then what I wanted to point out was you were told to code the reset button and if you have a look here, 
all of this was just copied and pasted from the on activate event of the form. Okay, then all you had to add to the reset button was to clear the rich edit, clear the edits, and set the focus back to EDT name. Okay, so those are the solutions for the homework. Now let's get back to if statements. So if you have a look here, you can see that this is an example again. It's one that I showed you in a previous lesson about guessing the number. And I want to just point out a few things that you need to be aware of. <clears throat> can anybody tell me if you have a look here? There's a problem. Delphi has given me a squiggly red line underneath. Oopsie, sorry. Oh, my word. Underneath the word else. Okay, now I'm going to carry on talking because as I said yesterday, there's up to a minute and a half delay between you guys answering me and or me asking the question and you answering me. So I'm going to carry on and then I'll look for your answers. So why is there a red squiggly line underneath this else? <clears throat> my structure of my if statement is if I guess equals I num. So I'm looking to see if this is true. If this is true, my show message is going to say correct, well done. Otherwise, it's going to show incorrect, guess again. Okay, so um, <clears throat> basically it's if you've guessed the number correctly, show a message. If you haven't, then you have to try again. Okay, and Delphi has a problem with my code and I don't know if it's the delay or if it's just that you guys aren't 100% sure of what the answer is. I must say this delay is a bit of a pain at times. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer anyway. Okay. The problem is this offending character over here. Okay. Now, most of the time you have an error or a problem because you haven't put a semicolon at the end of the line. With an if statement, the else is a problem because you have because the, the rule in Delphi is you put a semicolon at the end of every line, okay? If, then, else is one line. If you have a look at my colored corrected code over here, you will see that it is one line of code. If, this, then, this, else, that, one line. And that's why there is only a semicolon after the second show message. So that's important to take note of. Okay. Then, <coughs> excuse me, some more rules. Okay. So still, as much as possible, keep your input processing and output separate. It's not always that easy once we include, um, I just want to see guys, because I think you are, you see, you are answering me. And I just didn't see it. OK, Anonymous wants to know what's mod. Anonymous, go back and have a look at previous lessons. And now I see, yes, you did actually see that we need a semicolon. Well, the, the semicolon is wrong. Sorry, guys, this thing doesn't scroll automatically. My bad. All right, now I'm at the bottom. Let's carry on. So keep the input processing and output separate. Start the condition with the variable you are testing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you look at these two examples, if I num is greater than 10, <clears throat> is much easier to understand and read. The logic makes a lot more sense than if 10 is less than I num. Okay, if you look at this one, you actually have to stop and think about it and go, okay, 10 is less than I num. Okay, so that means that I num is bigger. Why waste your time? Just read it like a sentence. If I num is greater than 10. So always put the variable first. Okay, so both of these are correct, but that's yuck. Don't do it. Okay. To calculate if a variable is greater than or equal to a value, the greater than comes first. So you can't do if equal to or greater than. That won't work. You have to say if I mark is greater than or equal to. And remember, like I said yesterday, that means that 80 is included in the if statement. If I take the equals away, then we're going to start looking from 81. Okay, yes, Jared, the delay is a bit frustrating. Huh? Okay, moving on. 
Think carefully when using numbers that have real values. You have to be aware once again that real values are tricky, if you want to put it that way. So if a number should be greater than or equal to 60, let's say you're testing for somebody as well, they got more than 60. You can't use greater than 59. In an integer, it would be fine. Greater than 59 is 60 and above, okay? But with real values, greater than 59 could mean 59.001. So therefore you have to think carefully when you're doing if statements with real values. So if you look here, if I mark is greater than or equal to 60, if I mark is greater than 59, or if I mark is greater than or equal to 60 again, all of those are correct. If I mark, if R mark is greater than or equal to 59 is incorrect. Okay. So you'd have to be careful of how you did that. Right, <clears throat> I'm just coming back to the chat quickly to see. Okay, it says new ones, but it doesn't matter because I don't have to look at them. Right, now we've discussed this already, but I want to make sure that you are clear and understand. <clears throat> this single line directly above the else has no semicolon. So this here, whatever line is, and I'll show you why it's said like this just now. Whatever line becomes before the else mustn't have a semicolon. Okay. And please remember, and I'm going to show you some examples, it's possible to do calculations between the if and the. So I don't have to just have if I num is greater than five. I can also say if I num plus two equals four. So I can do a calculation or, as I'll show you later, I can put functions into this if part to evaluate something. Okay. So remember, please, you can do calculations as well. Now, this is the big one. And again, I touched on this yesterday, so we need to make sure that you understand. If you have more than one statement that needs to happen, if your if is true, then they have to be between a begin and an end. And what we do is we use indentation to make our code more readable. So this one here is if R mark is greater than or equal to 80, then ink the counter and display the counter and then end. <clears throat> Please note here, there's a semicolon at the end of my output line, but there is no semicolon after the end because now the end comes before the else. Okay, I'm just checking. Are if statements typed in the output section? No, they are typed in the processing section. So generally they are part of your processing and that's where it starts becoming a bit of a problem because yes, this is input and output all together in your if statement. So you still have to try, but very often it's not possible. Okay. Also another thing that's mentioned here, to help yourself Put comments in to show you whereabouts you are in your code. So put a comment that shows that this is the end for the if statement, because eventually you're going to find yourselves when you're writing programs, you're going to have begins and ends all over the place. So if you can use comments to distinguish what they are, it's going to make your life easier. OK, so if this else, no semicolon, begin. And now I'm going to output try harder and I'm going to output the contents of the edits text property and then I'm going to end again. So you can never ever, as we discussed with our errors, you can never ever have, I'm just checking any messages again, right, you can never ever have a begin without an end or an end without a begin. And when you get to the point where you start having to have lots of these, it be can become very, very confusing. So if you put your comments in, it makes your life easier. Okay. Right, I'm just checking to see that nobody's asking or commenting. No, right, let's carry on. Right, <clears throat> like I said just now, an if statement can contain a function in the statement. So here's some examples of things that we've done already. OK, 
okay? D date gets the value of DTP date dot date. So I'm reading in the date property from my date time picker. And then my if statement is if year of D date is greater than 2000. So my function will return what date it is from the date. We've also done this all in previous lessons. And if the result of that function is greater than 2020, then I'm going to output this year is in the future. Okay. Something else that I've done here to show you. Okay. You can still put a begin and end around a single statement. I personally would actually recommend that you do this because if you get into the habit of actually looking at your if statement as if year of D date greater than 20, then begin, then you will never forget to add the begin and the end. And it will come in very useful when you get to loops as well. OK, so your code will still work if you have a begin and end that are unnecessary. So this is a personal preference and your teachers may be different. And please, you need to do what your teachers tell you. But for me, I think it's actually better to always put a begin and end in because then you won't forget when you need them. OK, then this one over here, if you're testing if something is true, you don't need to include the value of true. And I'll show you now what I mean. If we have a look at this statement here, here I've got a function inside another function. These are all ones that we've done before. So if is leap year applied to year of D date equals true, then output you've chosen a leap year. So here I've shown you that you don't need the begin and end, it will still work. Now I see there might be new questions, so I'm just going to quickly check. Okay, how do you write a comment? You type two front slashes, and then you write whatever it is that you need to write. Okay, so front slash, front slash, and then you write what you need, or you put your comment in curly brackets, and then the compiler will ignore it. Okay, so watch this one carefully. This is what I've typed here. Now, that goes away. This will give you exactly the same result. So what I'm showing you here is, if your if statement is equal to true, you don't have to type equals true. You can just go if is leap year, year of date. Okay, so something else, nice little tip that you can remember. Again, it's a case of if you type equals true, it's not wrong and you won't lose marks for it. Okay. Right, on to ink and deck. <clears throat> so ink and deck do exactly the same as I count gets the value of I count plus one if I want to use ink and deck does the same as minusing one. Okay, so if we have a look over here, here's my guessing example again, just to use to explain. Just want to see it looks like no. Okay, so I read in the guess. If the guess equals the number that I generated in the on activate event of the form, begin, show message correct, well done, and ink I points. So now the person gets one more point towards their total because they guessed correctly. Okay. Else begin, show message incorrect, guess, and here I'm using deck to reduce their chances. So in this instance, I gave them, let's say, I think I remember I gave them five guesses. Okay. So if this person now guessed incorrectly, I'm reducing the number of guesses that they get. Okay, so deck reduces it by one. Okay, so the other thing that you need to be aware of is that if it looks like this, it's one. I'm either counting or minusing one, or I'm adding one depending on what I'm using. Okay, but these two things are pretty useful but let's first of all go on to another very very important thing and i see it so often and i'm hoping that all my red and my highlighting is going to make you remember ink and deck are procedures now these are besides show message these are basically the first time that you have come across a procedure now procedure is another type of method like a function but it works 
differently. If you have a look over here, a procedure, the ink procedure gets called on its own. It's not called as part of another statement. So down here, I've highlighted it. I've written no exclamation mark. There is no gets the value of sign when we call ink. Okay. It's just do it. Ink I points. Not I points gets the value of ink I points. And this is very, very, very important. Okay, right, somebody anonymous has asked me, so I'm just checking quickly. So, ink means increase and deck means decrease. Okay, exactly. Right, so if I want to increase something, I'm going to use ink, and I want, if I want to decrease, it's going to be deck. Okay, so please remember, don't do this. I'm hoping that this red line is going to stick in your memories and you will not do this. Must do this. This good, this bad. Okay. Right. What are our rules as far as ink and deck are concerned? They only work with integer and char data types. Now, integer and char and one other are called ordinal data types, which I will get to in the next lesson, I'm going to explain to you exactly what ordinal data types are, okay? If you choose a char variable in ink, then it's going to change the character to the next one in our good old favorite ASCII table. Remember the ASCII table? Okay, so ink and deck, if I have got a capital K and I in my variable and I ink it, it's going to change to capital L. Now, there's a reason why I've actually put this ASCII table on here because I want to show you something else just for interest's sake. Okay, remember, we type hash nine to put tabs in, in our code. Okay, if you have a look here on our ASCII chart, the number nine has HT next to it. HT stands for hard tab. So that hash nine comes from the ASCII table. Okay, the other ones that I've highlighted here for interest's sake, hash 10 is LF and that stands for line feed. And hash 13, if any of your teachers have shown you, because hash 10 and hash 13 for your purposes do the same thing, hash 13 stands for carriage return, which is basically pressing enter. Okay, carriage return comes from the old typewriters. And then another one, just to give you a little bit of interest is number 32 on our ASCII table is a space. Okay, so you could assign hash 32 to a string variable and it would put a space in it. Okay, also something just by the by because I'm here, even your digits have ASCII values, which is important to remember when it comes to your data types. Remember I discussed it a while ago, putting a phone number, storing it as a string because it has a different value. Okay, let's go back. Right, so deck will change to the previous character in the ASCII table. Just want to see. All right. Okay, so somebody else has also asked about ink and deck, or it's the same person who got connected. Deck decreases, ink increases. Okay, so here it is. Because it does the same as I count gets the value of I count plus one, or I count gets the value of I count minus one, it must still be initialized. You still, so when I have ink, I count, I still have to initialize I count because I'm adding to it or subtracting from it. So don't forget the rule about this being on both sides of the gets the value of symbol because you're now using the new method. If you use ink and deck, the same rule applies. You have to initialize the variable. Now, if you have, um, if you want to up it by more or decrease it by more, then you actually have two places that you can do this. So you can say ink 
I count comma five, and that's the same as adding five to I count. And the same thing, dick, I count comma two, is the same as subtracting two from I count. If you don't put the number in, as we've seen, it defaults to one. If you want it to be something other than one, you have to type comma and the number that you actually want to increase or decrease it by. Okay. This, by the way, always has to be a variable because you're changing it in the RAM. Okay. I can't go ink 10 comma five because where's the 15 going to go that it's changed it to? This one here, the five, can be a five or it can be a variable. So I could have ink I count comma I num and then whatever's in I num will be used to add on to the counter. Okay, lots to remember, right? We've looked at the ASCII. Ooh, we're nice and fast today, so there's gonna be time for questions later. So your homework for today is to have a look at the if statements folder and only the take a lot menu option. Now you'll see when you open up this activity and I'll spend extra time showing you guys what the questions look like and then where you can get the data so that you can actually do the homework. Um, so only the menu take a lot option. This is a very, very full program. So just focus on that. Again, we're using a dialog box. Then the extra instruction, which I showed you in a previous lesson, is to use the name of the item in your dialog box. So what they're asking you is enter the description of a project product you'd like to order, like divergent series. So you put that in your first input box. Your second input box that pops up must take what they typed in the first input box and put it into the second argument of your input box. Okay, quite tricky. I see there might be another message coming through. No, okay. So there's the first part of the question. Then Here's the rest of it. Keep track of the total amount ordered and the number of items bought. By now, guys, if you've done all of these activities, this should be able to be done in your sleep. But now you're not going to say I items gets the value of I items plus one. You're going to say ink I items. Okay. If it's the first item bought, if Okay, remember what we've done today. If it's the first item, how do I determine if it's the first item bought? I'm going to leave that up to you to work out. Okay, display the item number, item description, amount, and the total amount owed so far. Again, what am I looking at in this, Richard? It? One, two, three, four columns. Okay, you see how we're getting lots of practice for all of these different skills. So you're all going to be grade 10 IT experts by the time you're finished. Okay, in the checkout button, store the input from the edit. If the user's a student, so again, we've got an if statement. If they're a student, they're gonna get a 5% discount. Ensure that your program is not case sensitive in order Let's just do that because we've got the time. What do I use? And I'm assuming, I think you can all see the chat and I know we're going to wait for the answer. But anyway, what would I use to make sure that my program is not case sensitive? If I'm asking the user to enter whether they are a student or not, the word student, how do I make sure that if they type it capital S student, lowercase s student, how do I make sure that my program checks for both? What do I have to do? What function do I apply to the input to make sure that it'll check everything? I haven't done this, so I don't blame you if you don't know the answer, but let's see if somebody does. Okay. Um, anonymous, you absolutely do not have to memorize the ASCII chart. Okay. It was just out of interest sake that I showed it to you. Okay. Callum, you get the activity from the data files that can be downloaded at the, on the link that I will share with you now. 
all that I'll show you now. Okay, so I'm going to carry on looking at the things. If the user spent more than a thousand rand, so here we've got another if, okay. Users will get their delivery for free if they ordered for a total amount of 450 or more. Otherwise, they have to pay a 60 rand delivery fee. So you've got to read this question very carefully. Okay, you've got to make note of everything that you see in this question. And then VAT is calculated after the discount has been deducted, but no VAT is paid on the delivery fee. So don't add the delivery fee to the calculation and then total the VAT. And here you have sample output. Sample output is very useful because you can now um, see exactly if you're on the right track and yes finally our minutes are over because somebody has told me we would have to use uppercase well done guys you would apply uppercase to the input of the student and now Bood has said and you are very very it's a very good question because you said I thought Delphi wasn't case sensitive in general so as I said yesterday your code, what you type as the programmer, is not sensitive code, a case sensitive. So the Delphi code is not case sensitive. You can type that in any case that you like. But as I said, and let's just go back quickly. Okay, remember your computer is using these numbers to identify these characters. Okay, and these numbers for those of you who don't know, are then converted, and I wish this delay wasn't here because I can't wait another minute and a half to ask you this question, but these numbers are then converted to binary so that your computer can understand it. Now, the reason why the contents of a variable is case sensitive is because the ASCII value of a capital A is different from the ASCII value of a lowercase a. So if my computer is comparing a and a, it sees 65 and 97. Not the same, okay? So that's why the contents of my variables are case sensitive, because if Delphi looks at student lowercase, or students starting with a capital, it's going to see it differently. So like somebody anonymous has said in the chat, I will use the uppercase function and I will apply it to the input. And I'll show you tomorrow what that looks like. So if you skip that section, if you haven't done it yet, that's fine. I'll show it to you when we get there. Okay. All right, there we go. Careful. Yes, except not the S colon. It's going to be uppercase and S student. Okay. All right, Neil. Yes, Delphi is not case sensitive, Neil, but the text inside our variables is. Okay. Right, so that's the next part of the instruction. Here in the numbers menu, you now need to practice storing. So you've got to display this one's quite quite straightforward and simple and it covers lots of skills that you have to know. Okay, so if I were you in actual fact, even though they come after each other, I recommend you start with the numbers menu. Okay, and then you have to once again, use your brain to work out the logic. So, test, count and display if the number is even or odd. Okay, Five how do I determine? Thank you. How do I test if a number is odd or even? I'm going to divide it by two. If there's a remainder of zero, it's even. Okay, I need to test for one because the other one, okay, otherwise it's odd. Okay, if it's an odd number, calculate and display the percentage of odd numbers selected so far. Test if it is a multiple of three. There's again our modern div coming in. And test if it's a num if, if it is a factor of 60. So again, you've got examples here, but you need to assess maths when you do this activity because your maths 
breaking down how you perform calculations is going to help you with this activity. I will spend quite a bit of time going through the logic for this program in the next lesson because I think both of these activities are pretty tricky. But I think it's a good idea that you've at least attempted them, even if you can't get it right, for the next lesson. Okay. Right, so what have we learned today? If statements are used when a program must make decisions, there are several rules to follow when applying if statements. Ink and deck are procedures that ink increase or deck decrease an integer or a char value. And the take a lot activity must be done for homework. And I've left out the numbers activity as an instruction here, but I still think you should do it. I just want to make sure I've got, okay, how do you apply uppercase? And how much does ink and deck move by? Just on their own, honey, it's one. Okay, so if I go ink, I count, I count is going to go up by one. If I go deck, I count, it's going to go down by one. But if you look here, if I add a number after a comma, it's going to go up by that number or down by that number. Okay, all right, then I've asked about the applying the, the uppercase. Unfortunately, I can't do it on the presentation now, but I'll see what I can do for you now. Let's first have a look at the links, and I'm going to leave these on here for a while. If I were you, if you're looking on your phone at this lesson, take a screenshot. If you're looking on your computer, take a photo so that you can see them. So the book, if you want to purchase the book, you can go to the IT, ITSI website and download the ebook. You sh must get the data. The data is free. Okay, you just click this link or go, sorry, go to this link and you can go and get the data. Okay. I, no, I can't. Sorry, guys. Okay. And then africateengeeks.co.za is where you will get the schedules for all of the lessons and you will get the files like this PowerPoint presentation. Now, they're working really hard to get these things uploaded and sorted as soon as possible, but they might be a bit behind. So just keep checking. Okay. All right. Then we've got some more questions. In the output, how do you make the heading display only once? Do we code it? Yes. If you only want it to display when the program activates, then you're going to put it in the on activate event of the form. But then you would copy it if you had a reset button and put it into the reset button as well. Okay. All right. Anonymous. Yes, I can. But um, would you like to possibly email me? Um, Okay, don't bombard me now, but okay. If you, I don't know if you can, there we go. Okay, if you can see that, that's my email address. Okay, I don't know how much I'll get through, but I will certainly try. Okay, right, and then tomorrow we're going to look at ordinal data types, the links function, some validation techniques and the in operator. And since I can now make announcements on the chat, I'm going to show you all how length works or how uppercase works. So what I would say is I'd say if uppercase open brackets is student at a variable equals and then I would type Okay, so there's my code. Okay, unfortunately, honey, I can't help you with hardware stuff. You might need to upgrade your app. Okay, so there's the code for the if uppercase s student is a variable and then equals student has to be in capitals so that it compares it. Okay, so this is what we're doing tomorrow. We're going to look at some more validation techniques which is what using uppercase is. And then we're going to look at the in operator. Okay. Don't forget to check out the social media sites. And remember what I said as far as I know, if you come back here later today, you will still be able to see this lesson as a recording. Okay. So we now have probably one minute or not because of the delay, but... I will 
sit here for one more minute and see if anybody has any other questions. This delay really is quite, makes a person uncomfortable because you have to sit here in silence while you wait. Okay, would appear. Okay, so you from one of my classes, if you downloaded the file at the beginning, yes, it's got it in there, Jared. Everything that you need for these activities is in those files that I gave you guys at the beginning of the year. Okay. All right, I think we are done. So thank you for coming. And um, I will see you tomorrow.